All right, in this video, we're going to take a quick look at basic composite shell analysis in Abacus. We're going to import an IDIS file and auto mesh it. Uh, we're going to do that with HyperMesh. We can try that with Abacus. I find HyperMesh to be a little bit more suitable. We're going to define laminate properties in Abacus as a composite and then do a composite layup. We're going to request output for laminate stresses. That's something it doesn't automatically do. And then we're going to check our ply layup. Now the model I have comes from a place called grabcad.com. I'll show you that here in just a moment. It's a website that uh, you can sign up for. There's no charge for it. A lot of different people have uh, created all kinds of different models, a lot of SolidWorks models, but you can get IGES files and different kind of CAD geometry files. And the one that uh, I wanted to look at was an egg. So let me see if I can search for that here. All right, it's not coming up, but um, okay, yeah. So here it is. There's uh, several different um, eggs that are in here. I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly which one I grabbed. Maybe something like this. Uh, and uh, there was one of them in particular that has an uh, uh, IGES file. Now the reason why I'm saying an IGES file is that um, Abacus can import several different types of components. Let's take a quick look. So if we go in here to uh, file, import a uh, part, these are all the different things that, that it can import. One of this is an IGES file. There's CATIA. Of course, CATIA and Abacus are closely linked together by their parent company. Uh, Parasolid, ProE, and some different things in here. Now, HyperMesh, bring that over here. HyperMesh can import uh, uh, several others, including SolidWorks files. So if we go import uh, geometry, and uh, here it says auto detect, but here uh, ACES, CATIA, there's DXF, which is an AutoCAD, FiberSim, IGES, JT, Parasolid, ProE, SolidWorks, all these different types. So it's a little bit more uh, full feature as far as the import capabilities go. Now, the, the model that I found uh, was an egg. I'm going to change this scale factor down here to 1, and I'm going to import that. I'll, I'll provide you with this IGES file, but if you want to look at any of those other models that are out there, uh, they're kind of fun to play around with. So let's see. I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to open up my uh, egg file, if I can find it. And uh, this one right here, uh, egg.igs. Like I said, I'll provide that to you um, with a uh, reference back to GrabCAD. Now, I'm going to make the scale factor 1. If this was in, like, meters, we can change this to a scale factor of 1,000 to make it in millimeters. I don't know exactly what it's in right now, but I'm going to go ahead and import this, and we'll, we'll take some measurements and see what's going on. All right, so here's the basic uh, geometry lines. We can rotate that around if we want. And I'm going to go, I'm just going to jump right to an auto mesh of surfaces, everything there, and the uh, element size. Let's try 10. Let's see what that does for us. And I'm going to mesh this. Okay, so there's my egg. I can turn in uh, on the solid shading. That's pretty coarse. I'm going to reject that. And let's go back to this panel and let's try uh, uh, maybe, how about two, a size of two. Okay, so it has some more. And then it's remeshed it. So that looks pretty good. For our purposes, that looks really good. Alright. 
So I'm going to go over here and uh, there's my model. I'm going to turn off anything I don't need and I'm just going to go ahead and rename this to uh, egg. Maybe make it a different color. All right. Now these are shell elements that got created. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this hypermesh file just so I have this available. Let's see, I guess this would be homework 12. And I'm going to go and I'm going to export it. So I'm going to go File, Export a Solver Deck, Standard 3D, and uh, I'm going to get back into my Homework 12 folder. I'm going to change that to egg that IMP. I'm going to export what is displayed. And uh, I'm going to hit export, and it should be there. Let's let's take a look. Okay, so it has an S3. Those are the triangular elements. It's a three-noted shell. And the S4R, four-noted reduced integration shell. Now, you, you can do solid composites. You can do shell composites. The composite layup tool seems to work a little bit easier with uh, shell elements. So um, you can start with uh, this all done in, in Abacus. But make sure you get to the shell elements if you're going to do it the way that I'm going to do it here. Let's see what happens when we import this IGES file into Abacus. And uh, see, see what it does compared to what Hypermesh does. So I'm going to import a part. Let's specify IGES. And then let's find our folder homework 12. Oops. There it is. Okay, so part name, egg, uh, let's call it dash ABA for abacus. There's some part attributes, okay, 3D deformable, I just options. You can take a look at entities and do some different things. A lot of times when you, uh, this is pretty typical, if you're uh, an analyst, you may get a, a component designed by a designer. Maybe they're using ProE or SolidWorks or something like that. And then you have to take that, that CAD data and mesh it. So this is, this is kind of common, kind of common. This is a really simple component. Obviously things can get extremely complicated. Uh, but you have to take their representation and something that you can use. So you may have to clean the, the files up and do different things. Let's hit OK. And uh, there it is in Abacus. And it, it looks a little weird to me. It doesn't look meshed uh, terribly well. Or not even meshed yet. But it looks like it's got this slant right here. So I don't really know what goes on in, in these importers and why Hypermesh seems to do such a such a better job. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use the one from Hypermesh. If for some reason you don't have access to Hypermesh, I'll provide you with the input file. And uh, for this then, I'm going to go in here and specify my INP file that I created in Hypermesh. All right, so there it is, and we're going to work with this one. That seems like it's a much better uh, 
mesh than what we would have gotten from Abacus. All right, so it's already instanced in the assembly. Let's go back up here to properties. In material one, that's fine. Elasticity, we'll do elastic material properties. And this time, since we're going to do a composite, let's do a composite lamina. And we're going to specify the E1 and the E2 stiffnesses, Poisson's ratio 1, 2, and the shear moduli. Now, I got these out of a composites book for carbon fiber composite, so we're going to have a carbon fiber egg. Uh, we do need to do something else first, though, I guess. We should check the size of this thing. Let's go back to hypermesh, and let's uh, pull a couple of dimensions off of this. See, we should look. We should see distance. Here it is. Distance between two nodes, top to bottom. Uh, we're looking like it's um, 105 units. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know what kind of egg would be 105 units tall. I don't think that's in millimeters because uh, it's a pretty big egg. So before we uh, let's redo the export, but before we do that, let's scale it down. All right, so um, I just went out and measured an egg, and uh, it's about 55 millimeters. So let's just divide everything by two. So let's uh, scale it. Of course, you know, on, on the other hand, um, I don't know any carbon fiber composite eggs either. So maybe the, the dimensions don't really matter. But let's go ahead and, and scale it. So we're going to go to Tools, uh, Scale, Nodes, Displayed. And we're going to just uh, have a uniform 0.5 scale. Oops. So I'm going to go uniform and then put in 0.5. If I can get that in there. I'm going to have to put, press enter. There it is. And I'm going to do a scale plus. We should shrink it down. All right. So there it is. So let me resave this file and re-export this model. All right, so let's go and re-import this thing. I'm just going to delete this one and. Uh, I'm going to file import a model. Here's my egg again. And there it is. I'm just going to get rid of this model one so I don't accidentally select it. All right, so now we're going to go back and get into the properties. We're going to input some mechanical elastic properties for lamina. And like I said, I got some of these out of a book. In uh, so 14,000, that would be in the fiber direction, the transverse direction, 3500, new 12.4, G12, 4.2 uh, gigawatts per square meter, so that's 4200, and I'm going to use these stiffnesses just the same. I don't have that information, but I don't know what else to put in here, so I'm just going to make those the same. All right. There's all kinds of other things you can put in, but this is uh, uh, suitable for our purposes. So I'm going to hit OK. And uh, let's try this. Let's create a section, and we're going to do a composite shell. Shell composite section one. And here we have this table that comes up with the material, the thickness, the orientation, and the ply. Now, if I want another ply in here, I'm going to hit enter and it'll pop up a whole other row in here. All right. Layup name, uh, let's call it L1. And the material, 
Now how I'm going to do this is I'm going to select all of these. There's a way to select them all. If I can get that to work. Well, I should be able to select all of them and at the same time. And I'm going to have a one millimeter thickness for the top and bottom layer, and I'm going to have a two millimeter thickness for the middle layer. Orientation angle, I'm going to have a 45 degree, a zero degree, and a minus 45 degree layup. And then the ply names, I'll just call them 1, 2, and 3. P1, P2, and P3. We look in the advanced tab. Um, we're going to use the section thickness. And then uh, we can change some things here if we want, but we're going to stick with the defaults. All right, and then we're going to assign the section. Okay, and it has section one, shell composite, and uh, I think we're ready to hit OK. And I'll X out of that. So that should be assigned our composite section. Alright, so there it is. Uh, there's our egg. I'm going to create a step. After the initial one, uh, let's make it a time period of 10. And in our steps, we're going to apply some initial boundary conditions. Now, if you notice, this um, is not quite, it's hard to find the right view. So I'm going to find a toolbar. I'm going to check on this views toolbar up here. And it, put, it popped it up on my other screen, but I'm going to drag it over. And here it has these, these views. And I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to stick that into my toolbars. You can move this around to a different level if you'd like. But now with these, I can specify a, a view and just the XY plane. That's kind of convenient. So for my boundary conditions, I'm going to create one uh, that's going to be displacement and rotation. And I'm going to select them individually, and I'm just going to pick a few things down on the bottom. Let's see what that kind of looks like. Okay, so it's reasonably symmetric. It's not exactly, but I think it'll be close enough for our purposes. Now I'm going to hit done. And uh, now you notice since these are shell elements, you can have displacements and rotations. I'm just going to kill all of those right there. And then uh, in step one, I'm going to create a load, a pressure load. And uh, try the top of the egg. Looks all right. And it's going to ask me if I want the brown or the purple surface. Now, the purple surface is on the inside of the egg. So if we wanted to push up on the inside, we would specify the purple surface. Uh, we we're going to do the, uh, the brown surface. And uh, let's just put a stress uh, pressure of 100 megapascals on it with our uh, amplitude here. So remember, we did a step with 10 seconds. So there we have our, our egg that's loaded up, our composite egg. And let's see what else we need to do. I need to go into our field output requests. I'm going to create a new one. And uh, for this domain, I'm going to put in a composite layup. Okay, now the composite layup didn't show up, so I need to find out what's going on here. All right, so I think I have it sorted out. I'm going to delete this section. And I'm going to go to this tool, this com uh, Create Composite Layup tool. I'm going to use conventional shell with three ply count. For 
the region. You know, see down at the bottom it says for apply one. I'm going to select that region in there's for apply two. Now, like I said, there should be some way to select all three of them. And then uh, we'll just do this one for uh, apply three. for the material. See I did edit material. I'm going to select that material one that I created. I'm uh, right clicking edit material. Right click edit material. In my thickness I said that we were going to do one, two, and one millimeters. In my rotation angle minus 45, zero, and 45. Okay. Now in um, down here in my field outputs then I'm going to create a field output at every x units of time change that to one and now here for composite layup here it is now uh, specified part one composite layup one and we're going to hit pre-select okay so that what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to look at each laminate stress and strain and selected points for each ply. Um, output at section points, the middle section point, or um, you can specify all section points and all plies or whatnot. Okay, so we're going to do that. And our other output request, let's go ahead and edit that and change this to every one unit of time as well. All right, now I think I have everything. Let's take a quick look. Uh, we have loads. Let's take a look at them. There they are. And we have our boundary condition specified. So I'm going to create a job and submit it. Now my uh, original intention was to compare this to classical lamination theory, uh, CLT. And, um, but it, it would take a little bit of time to get a set up for understanding of uh, classical lamination theory. If you work in composites, you probably have a background in that already. This is just kind of a way to uh, see how quickly you can set up a composite shell in, in Abacus. This may be uh, you know, a fuselage of an aircraft instead of an egg or what have you. This is just a simple object that I had that uh, will suffice to illustrate uh, what we want to show here. So it's running. It's now it's completed. We're going to go into results. Okay. So it has the uh, Von Mises contours. If we want it, we can animate it. It's getting a little rocking because uh, the boundary conditions are completely symmetric with the load. We can uh, change some of these visualization options to show the free edges. Can change the, the limits on the contour. And uh, we can slow this down a little bit. Those limits might be a little, uh, maybe we can change them a little bit more. 
So we're going to go to Options, Contour, and let's make this maybe uh, 100. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. All right. So while that's while that's going, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new viewport. You know, kind of put it behind it. This button up here will. I uh, thought it would uh, allow us to see both viewports, but um, what we can do is we can go to viewport, we can cascade, okay, or we can tile vertically, and that'll put them side by side. So if you wanted to see one view of this thing in another view, you can do that in here. So let's do a, a cut on this so we see part of that structure. So we can see that it's hollow and everything. And then this is the entire structure over here. And you can sync the animations up and everything. Now, one of the things that we wanted to do was take a look at the laminate ply. So I'm going to highlight this right window. And I'm going to go into, um, let's see, options, let's see, tools, query. And you see down here at the bottom it says the ply stack plot. I'm going to do that for this mesh. And here's my ply stack over on the right. Remember I said that the, one of them was going to be at uh, 45 degrees, one of them was 0 degrees and it's 2 millimeters thick, and this is the one that's at minus 45 degrees. So this is a um, composite layup and we can use this tool to verify what these uh, these layups are. Okay, so there's that option. Now, another thing that we might do then is to take a look at the contours. See, I want to get rid of that, that red there. All right, so I just clicked on this plot and I got rid of that. Another thing we might want to do is to take a look at the stresses in each individual laminate. So let's see if I remember how to do this. Let's go to result. Uh, not that one. Alright, so right up here, you see this, this contour with a little line underneath of it. If we click on that one, that's our field output options. And uh, right now we're at the Von Mises stress. If we go down to section points, we can select by categories or by plies. If we select by ply, we can select ply 1, 2, or 3. And uh, so if we do ply 1, we get a contour for ply 1. If we select ply 2, we get the contour for ply number 2. And lastly, if we select ply 3, we get the contour for ply number three. Now because these are uh, layered composites, you know, you will have different stresses that build up in these different plies. All right, so that's basically what I wanted to show you with uh, composite shell laminate analysis. So if we go back to our model, the important step here is in our properties. We want to use this uh, composite layup tool. Alright, so uh, why don't you try that? If you want to, you can try a different uh, file from GrabCAD or somewhere else to make some shells. You can make a composite plate. Again, just be careful. You just need to make sure you use a, uh, a shell element. Uh, you can do composite solids that there's some information on that in the uh, manual, but I personally haven't used that uh, previously. All right, have fun.